will get a better view of either the number on the groom's arm or trying to make out the uh, initials. Can I get a view now? There we go, number five, I think it is. That is Global Wonder for Jim and Susie Best, whose most recent form has been over hurdles. Um, was last seen on the flat back in October and was successful on that occasion. Up in trip um, on this occasion. Um, I don't think stamina is going to be a problem. Looks really well um, in terms of his uh, coat and condition. Then we have got horse who's just in front of us now number one bird for life slow start to the problem for bird for life he can she can completely blow it but she's had a real good winter have been in good form won a few races third last time out in a slightly higher grade of race than this and um you can sort of guarantee he's going to blow the start it's just a case of whether uh, she's capable of getting into it from that point there's not too many uh, regular front runners in this field so could be particularly with a fairly big field that just gets caught a little bit too far back number seven is next that is reset button the market leader for ben brookhouse sean levy takes the ride below form last time out around here that race has already worked out quite well um was third at south one second here the two runs before that definitely does stay was behind bird for life but only just a couple of starts ago and if getting back to form is well capable of making a mark at this level number 11 is all about alice for martin smith alec vakansky is taking the ride another one that can miss the break on occasions and did so uh, last time out but kept on over a mile and a half they're going up in trip today to two miles interesting to see um, how the step up in trip plays out um, for all about alice you can see why they're giving it a go with her um, number two is worth a look this is bouncy boy i think it's quite an interesting runner here uh, down in grade from last time out, not had many goes on the flat. Just plugged on, really, at Wolverhampton last time out. The pace perhaps wasn't quite strong enough. I think um, Ali Rawlinson will try and have Bouncy Boy relatively close up. Of course, uh, on his hurdles form, has shown enough ability to uh, make him of interest in a race of this nature. And he's the last one that we'll uh, see for the time being as they start to make their way out. Four to one, Bouncy Bay, Solo Queen five to one, thirteen to two, Bird for Life, and then nine to one, Henry the Fifth, King Charles is tens and twelves and bigger. Uh, the rest. Um, are you inclined to forgive Reset Buttons' run last time? Completely, Angus. It was mm -hmm. in a race at the beginning of January over course and distance, where Wink Levy made the running of Dave Evans's with the first on headgear on. They went very, very slow, and Reset Button was taken back to get get cover. Um, over the trip and just got into a poor position and couldn't come out of that position because the race was run at a door door and the race ne never developed so you can just put a line for that run and on that run um, sort of mid-December behind Zuckerberg you would have thought that puts in with every chance and on that occasion was behind Bird for Life but you can see how that, 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 that form can be turned around. Yeah indeed let's talk about a Bird for Life. She often Fluffs her chance with, with slow starts, but nonetheless, she's had a good time of it on the all-weather. She has. She is a mare who is dictated to by pace, Angus, mm. and she's always mm. slowly away. That's just her reset. She fluffs her line. She's, it's not because she's being Larry. She's just not quick into stride out the stalls. 
and she's always on the back foot on that occasion. If the race sets up and they go a good gallop, like it saw the last time, Dara Kino rode her for the first time, and she was slowly away in a, in a sort of slowly run race. If they go quick, she'll be seen to good effect, and she can sort of warm into it in her own time. And what you've got to do is you've got to sort of let her warm into the race early doors for her to be seen to best effect. So I'm sure Dara would learn plenty about her, but I think on paper, this race has got potential to be messy, Angus, from a pace perspective. Mm. And I think it's a race where someone could sort of stand up and go forward and, and, and make a name for themselves. Yeah, she's the sort of mare who'll probably get, could easily be placed again, running on late, but not, she would want to, to, to be seen at her best, she wants a good pace to go at, basically. And yeah, I complete, completely going down. agree. Yeah, OK, you mentioned to me that at a big price, you thought a fair might run OK. Again, a fair has been um, slightly unfortunate in a couple of last starts, not running too badly, but... Um, being poorly placed in steadily run races, I think there's potential for her to be rid more aggressively from stall 11. It gives her options to go forward under Sophie Reed, And I think if she does that, she'll be seen to much better effect than we've seen in the last couple of starts. And we know she's full effect on this course. The two miles is not really a concern for me. I know she hasn't won over it before, but I think she'll be fine. And I just thought she represents very, very good each way value in this race. Yeah, OK, there she is, uh, going down. The daughter of Saki's secret, she's drawn wide in. Stall 11, but um, she's got a chance at a, a big price. She goes, does go well here, as, um, as, as George highlighted. And um, she might run well because there's, there are not too many that come here in, in very good form uh, at all. Chris mentioned Bounsy Boy. thought this, uh, this maiden uh, who has um, tried the National Hunt game um, might have a squeak. Yeah, ran and around was, the all weather last time. That was the first run back on the flat mm. last time for a while, and you would have thought. That sort of blow a few cobwebs away as such, and I thought it was an encouraging enough run. But again, it's not a deep race form-wise, Angus, and um, I just thought it was definitely a race where I'd be prepared to take something at a big price and, and try and nick some each way money. Just take a chance, uh, perhaps with uh, with the fair there, arriving down at the start. Well, that's Bansy Boy there, Alistair Rawlinson Riley. He'll be coming out of stall 12. Anything else, George, that you want to mention in the race? No, I just think if they do go a good gallop, Bird for Life would be very competitive again, but she's completely dictated to by the way the race is going to set up from a pace angle. Yeah. OK. Um, they'll start loading uh, very shortly indeed. Uh, there might not be a lot, a lot of pace on here, Chris. If there is, uh, Bird for Life will surely run well again, even though she can fluff the start. Yeah, she's very consistent, isn't she? Even if the pace isn't that strong, she can um, get herself involved. But I mean, you'd go a very, very short price that she'll miss the break because she does nearly every time she runs. So I find it hard to believe that that'll change. Once you're in a, a biggish field, you can just end up a little bit too far back and um, you've got a lot of horses to pass. And um, the race sort of develops here, doesn't it, off the turn and horses start kicking and you can't really kick unless you come right round them. So it might just be difficult enough for Bird for Life from that point of view, but... She hasn't really put too much of a foot wrong this year, and or this, this winter, and you would think that she will um, run reasonably well once again. I thought Bouncy Boy looked of most interest at the prices. Maybe um, a messy tactical race will count against um, him here, but he is down in class. He's a horse that, based on his jumping form, could be on a fair enough mark. I thought he ran OK last time out. He just kind of got outpaced and then plugged on around Wolverhampton and um, suspect that Ali won't have him too far back here and um, if that is the case then he, he could be in a, a fair enough position to strike. Global Wonder looked well in the paddock I thought, he looks in decent enough shape and reset button, no he was below form last time out but his previous starts were solid enough and they would definitely be giving him a little bit of a chance Solar Queen is worth a mention um, debuted in a bumper then big fr uh, prices for all three starts on the flat but now goes right up in distance and at a low level there's got to be a chance that she finds a, a little bit of improvement given that she's up in distance and that looks a, a likely plus for Solar Queen who for the first time in her career really is in the market for a race and highlighting the fact that this is a much more realistic assignment uh, for her. Henry V for Anthony Carson is uh, one from 22 so far, has won a race off a higher mark and 
didn't run badly last time out, entitled to not be too far away. Another one that tends to come from a reasonably enough way back and um, from stall five will have to negotiate a little bit of traffic but as we saw earlier on it can open up off the bend if you stick to the rail and you can maybe get a little bit of a shot out from there it's a, a messy trappy puzzle to try and solve this one I'd nail my colours to the mast of Bouncy Boy I think and hope for a good run from him but that type of race where you're not dealing with the most uh, consistent of animals all of the time that said a, a few of the principles in this do tend to show their form more often than not, just don't have a great deal in hand. Hopefully Bounty Boy is unexposed, might well have uh, a bit of improvement to come and for marker six, 56 um, have a, a few pounds in hand and a few pounds in hand might well be enough. Just having a look at Bouncy Boy, I think they're just we're doing up the noseband again are they? He's uh, just been worked with. Looks like he's bit his tongue. I wouldn't be surprised if they took him out oh, here. Yeah, I think he's been withdrawn. Last one's going in without the tongue tie all been withdrawn no official announcement yet off and racing bouncy boy they went without bouncy boy who um, just there was some blood around the mouth with the tongue tie and he was withdrawn at the start so there'll be a rule four message to follow early on in this two mile contest amarigi as well to the fore and on the wide outside a fair moves forward in the green and white and they ahead ahead of king charles reset button and solar queen towards the inside the grey Hascari is in sixth place at the moment, just ahead of All About Alice as they make the turn into the back straight for the first time. A proud warrior is towards the outside of the field as they continue their progress uh, down the back straight. Henry V and uh, towards the rear is Bird for Life. So Amarigi in the pink sleeves has a narrow lead from racing in second place of Fair as they prepare to turn out of the back. In third place is King Charles who shows on the outside at this stage of Solar Queen. Fifth place belongs to Ascari as they exit the back straight and they make their way now back towards home for the first time. Reset button sits in sixth place. That's the horse in the uh, light blue colours just ahead of All About Alice in green. Henry V in pink and white, then Global Wonder in yellow and purple and the last two are Proud Warrior and Bird for Life is last of all. So it's Amarigi who makes the turn for home and has the lead. That lead for Amarigi is about a neck or so from a fair under Sophie Reed sitting in second place. King Charles disputes third place with Solar Queen as the pace seems to steady down slightly. The field becoming more compact as Huskari the Grey is on the inside of Reset Button, all about Alice in the green jacket just ahead of Henry V. Behind these Global Wonder and the last two, a proud warrior. And last of the 11 is Bird for Life. So definitely getting a breather out in front now as they make their way up past the stands. Rap Havlin and Amarigi leading from a fair in second place. Solar Queen is in third as they turn away. King Charles, as they enter now the final mile, has fourth place just ahead of Haskari. Reset Button is on the outside in sixth place with All About Alice. Then behind these we have Henry V, who's racing on the outside of Global Wonder. And still the back two, a proud warrior and bird for life. So Amarigi into the back straight for the final time. Still leads with a fairer length away. Two lengths in third to Solar Queen, whose partner is King Charles. Then Haskari is on the inside. Reset button comes next. All about Alice in the green colours as they continue their progress towards the final five furlongs. Henry V, Global Wonder, and still towards the back bird for life. Pace just picking up slightly, and a few of them, including Proud Warrior for John Egan, trying to take closer order right up on the outside as uh, he felt the opportunity was there to press on as they're about to leave the back straight. So Amarigi and Affair still stacking them up. Proud Warrior's been the one right round the outside with King Charles. They now make up the next wave in company with Solar Queen in third, fourth and fifth. 
Reset Button travelling strongly in sixth place, just ahead of Ascari, who's pushed along. All About Alice needs a little bit of racing room, just switched off heels, held in slightly by Henry V, as Affair now presses Amarigi. Proud Warriors continued this big run. Reset Button is now unleashed towards the centre in the pale blue. Two furlongs to travel. Affair being pressed by Proud Warrior. Reset Button, King Charles and Amarigi. They are the front wave of five. Henry V, Ascari, Global Wonder trying to get involved as well. Up the centre, Reset Button far side King Charles still coming there is Global Wonder in the yellow colours as they enter the final furlong reset button for Sean Levy a narrow leader but Global Wonder's finishing strongest down the outside for Aidan Brooks and it's Global Wonder who beat reset button it was close for third bird for life running on strongly shares a photo with Ascari King Charles was next for Henry V and all about Alice long time since he was last seen but Global Wonder is back in the winner's enclosure for Jim and Susie Best Global Wonder uh, outstaying in the end reset button who has run well enough in second it was very tight for third near side bird for life from a long way back with uh, Hiskari over on the far side but Global Wonder at 28 to 1 under Aidan Brooks for Jim and Susie Best was having to come from a long way back you can see right out the rear at the moment and follows through the eventual runner at reset button who looked like he was the one to beat at this point Sean Levy getting a good response out of him but switched to his outside and that's where the race really developed down the centre late on with horses making their ground from a good way back and Global Wonder finishing off best to take race five Yeah, he's done this off a long layoff, not been seen for a, a good while uh, in any code, and uh, has won for the bests. And uh, Aidan Brooks coming from off the pace, as did uh, Bird for Life, who's in a photo for third. A reset buttons run pretty well in, in second place, but uh, this horse defying the layoff, George. Yeah, very good training performance. Last seen on the flat, winning at Brighton on bottomless ground. And that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. obviously had a bit of a setback, but um, sort of positioned at the back of the field. You can see reset button, the favourite, sort of mid-pack, one off the rail with a sheepskin nosebander in, in the familiar um, Brookhouse colours. And um, Aidan Brooks sort of negated a clear passage, was able to sort of peel off that bend when, when needing a run. But um, they looked to go slow by the stands, didn't they? And the race developed down the back straight and the pace gradually picked up. You can see John Egan, who's at the rear of the field in the sort of light colours out, second last, progressive position down the back straight, felt they hadn't gone that quick. Yeah, you can see the winner, second last on the rail, and um, the third, I think in third or fourth bird for life, not beaten far, is, is plum last, so uh, they've come from a fair way back. They're certainly the first and uh, possibly the, the third, even though the race was steadily run, they, they both finished off quite well. They have indeed, and it's interesting, Angus, isn't it? As we've said before at Chelmsford, it's not a, a dis disadvantage to be challenging wide and keeping that yeah. passage nice and smooth off that home bend. And you can see Bird for Life, who's on the outside of the winner there, switches out under Darry Keenan um, to get a clear passage. Nothing's leading him through, and Aidan Brooks has to sort of wait for him to make that move and then was able to sort of just follow him through on, 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 on the wing of him as such. Reset button, no excuses, a better place than the winner throughout. Yeah, disappointing reset button mm. because came there with a winning run under Sean Levy. I just wonder whether maybe a, a sort of strongly run mile six might, might see a better effect. Just didn't really see that two miles out in, inside the last sort of half furlong. Yeah, Bird for Life did indeed get up for third place. That's almost coming down the outside in the white cap. But, um, doing what Bird for Life always does, slow, slowly, slowly away well behind and then running on strongly in the closing stages but has got third this time very consistent mare so this winner my bit of a surprise winner 28 to 1 Aidan Brooks